having this. Okay. Um, also, Mike is going to make us a cute little intro jingle, and it'll go on the intro and outro. And then he's going to make us a little transition jingle so that if there's any, like, awkward transitions, which there inevitably will be with my lack of editing skill, um, I can just throw in a little transition jingle. So, anyways, yes, I think doing kids' books at some point would be a great idea. Um, I, yeah, I have, like, six, mm, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven. But, yeah. Uh, I have a bajillion. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, it's one of the things that I do regret getting rid of for the tiny home is my books. My kids' books. Yeah, no, I don't know. Because there are times where I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be a minimalist and I don't want to have to cart around 20 boxes of books when I move so much (laughs) but at the same time I just can't part with these fantastic books that I can share with children so yeah I go back and forth yeah while we were getting rid of stuff I did because we also have little libraries here I don't know if you have them the little house ones that are on the side of the road yeah 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 okay yes we have those they're like the little neighborhood libraries yeah so we have a ton of them in our area and I found that like I would just go and with the kids and we would go on our neighborhood walks and we would find one and then we would like swap their books out. Um, So it felt kind of like new and fresh. And then anytime that we would find one that was just like, I loved it. And it was like one of my favorites. Then I would basically force them to keep it (laughs) because I was just like, you need this in your life. Uh, So I think that helped a lot, but yeah, no, I still, I don't know. I don't know. Something of these particular books, like this, the seven that I have, I have Eloise, that one my mom gave me, and it's like written inside of and everything. And then uh, Where the Wild Things Are, hello, classic. Yes. Um, And then I have Guess How Much I Love You. That one is Oh, I is love also that one. Very sweet. And then I have the Dr. Seuss original, like, yellow hardcover one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Love. And then the other three, these three are like my top three if I had to only keep three books for the rest of my life. One is You're Officially a Grown-Up. My mom gave this to me for graduation. It's by Judith Vera, Verist, Verist. Let the name butchering of these authors and illustrators begin. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> um... But anyways, I love this one because it's just really funny. Like, basically, it's like you see these kids that just do their own thing. Anyways, anyways, I love it. My mom is always laughing at me because I still will, like, call her occasionally for random things. And she's like, but you're an adult now. I'm like, yeah, 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 I am. (laughs) But still, I need to call. Uh, So I love that one. And then Chrysanthemum. Have you ever read that one? Yes, I if I haven't read it, I definitely have heard of it. But I think uh, I've read this it. One. This one is so, so sweet. Um, a little mouse gets named Chrysanthemum, and she loves her name, and then she starts school, and kids start making fun of her name. And it's basically, you know, a story about, like, just loving what you love about yourself no matter what, and, like, not worrying what other people say about you. But I love that one. I think it's really... I don't know. I just love it. And then, of course, I showed you earlier when we were chatting. My all-time favorite book in the whole wide world has beautiful illustrations, like penned illustrations. Uh, Stand Back, Said the Elephant, I'm Going to Sneeze by Patricia Thomas, illustrated by Wallace Tripp. Favoritist in the whole world book. And Amazon reviewers also love it. (laughs) Yeah, you were like, 4.9, that's amazing! Still blown away by that 4.9 score with over 700 reviews. (laughs) Yeah, no, I love this book. Like, uh, it's so good. I still read it sometimes to myself before bed. (laughs) I love that so much. We all have a little kid inside ourselves that we just need to let out more, right? Yeah, honestly, like, uh, I don't know what it is, too. Like, So, that book 
like my dad used to read it basically every night before bed and then there was this story and I don't know if you've heard of this because this could have just been one of those like your parent makes it up but you don't realize that it's made up until you're older and nobody else knows what you're talking about (laughs) um but it's the story of the wide mouth frog I'm assuming it's a book somewhere so (laughs) when I was little uh bath time I am pro bath time and I had these like they were like hand puppet washcloths and (laughs) so they were different animals and I always loved the ducky but they had like it was like you could put your hand inside them like a sock puppet you know and it was like the mouth was your hand but then they had like these like balls for like the eyes like on the characters Uh or like I don't even know anyways it was great but we had the frog one and so my dad would always tell me the story of the wide mouth frog (laughs) and he was like looking for um he was looking for his mom and so he's like going around like are you my mother and you know and like what do you eat what do you eat and then that just um, sounds like a version of dr seuss's are you my mother book (laughs) yeah basically it was like it was kind of that style but it was like what do you eat and then he went up to I think it's like an alligator or something. So he's like going up to all these people. Like, My, you know, I'm a wide mouth frog. What do you eat? I eat flies. <laughs> and like, just like whatever. And then he gets to like an alligator and he's like, hi, I'm a wide mouth frog. What do you feed your babies? And then he's, the alligator's like, I feed my babies wide mouth frog. No! And the little frog goes, oh, that's interesting. And he, like, shrinks his little mouth. And so, like, my dad would do this, and I would just die laughing. I thought you were laughing. about to say that he just chomped him up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to be like, what a horrible story to tell a child. I mean, yes, it's the true uh, circle of life or whatever, but no thank you. <laughs> Oh uh, man, that would have been brutal <laughs> and super funny, but no. Uh, but I just remember every time because my dad and my mom, honestly, both of them have really big mouths, so like they could get them really big, and then they would go, "Ooh, that's interesting," and like squinch them up, and I would just ah, childhood memories, you guys. Anyways, I so I love that story. Yes. Um, and oh my gosh. yeah, I still tell my kids that story. <laughs> like I'll uh-huh. tell them while they're in bath time and make little puppets and stuff and it's fun um anyways so to kick off this new series that we're having to the oh so simply podcast we have tried recording this before let's not kid ourselves (laughs) and it didn't go over very well Um, but now we are more technologically on top of things and we are going to start doing a podcast episode every tuesday brief backstory of this crazy relationship um because albeit this relationship has been it's new but we've never met in real life (laughs) yeah yeah we've never even (laughs) met in real life um but we met virtually in emma of emma's littles emma's littles yeah um we met in her book club and the first book that we were going over in that book club was the danish way of parenting and we would get in this group, and there was a bunch of other nannies in it, and then Janae would start saying stuff, and I was, like, taking notes, like, dash Janae, I'm gonna post this on my Instagram, this is such a good quote from her, and it just kept happening, and I was like, I'm just gonna reach out to this girl and be like, do you want to do a podcast with me? And she said yes. Now we're together <laughs> as uh, <laughs> podcast buddies. And I feel like it wasn't just notes that I was saying, it was also the fact that for different concepts from from the Danish way of parenting, I would just randomly say, oh, if you want to study this more, go read this book. Or, oh, if you want to study this more, go read this book. And yes, I read a lot. Yes. Literally, she added... (laughs) So then I messaged her and I'm like, will you do this podcast with me? It sounds kind of crazy. And like at that point, it was literally just a passing thought of like, I love 
the CGP Grey um, Hello Internet podcast that he does with Brady. I love that podcast, and I was like, I want to do kind of a variation of two dudes talking, but I want it to be two nannies talking. And then I loved um, the Nannies Share podcast with Amber and Courtney. They did a podcast, like, super brief. So sad they ended it, but... Anyways, I was like, I want to do something casual like this. So it was still like, just like this random passing thought. And I messaged her and I'm like, hey, do you have any books that we could talk about in a podcast episode? I believe my words were, do I have a list for you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she literally sends me, she's like, sends me a list of 10 books, guys, 10 (laughs) books. And then she's like, and I have more if you need. Those are just the top ones that I think we really need to do first. Those No, no, no. Those are the top ones off the top of my head that I don't have to look at all of my books to choose from. Uh, those are just what I can think of. Yeah, I'm like, okay, okay. Obviously, this podcast is happening and I have a lot more reading to do. So... <laughs> So we decided to start with a book that we both already read because I have a lot of reading to catch up on, (laughs) um, which is the one we were doing in our book club, The Danish Way of Parenting. And it also worked out beautifully because this book, I feel like overall is just like, obviously the Danish way of parenting. So it's talking about specifically how people living in Denmark parent and how that has led to... Danish people being the happiest since 1973, which is the book brings that out right in the beginning, um, is kind of, they say that the reason that they're always so happy is because of their upbringing and because of how they were parented as children. Um, And so then that cycle just continues, which is what's made them the happiest people for like 30 plus years. What is that? Like 40 years? I, I can't even do math right now. 50 years? 50 years. That's like 50 years. Okay. Oh, and the, the way that this book is set up, it kind of gives like an overall feel because I've already started reading some of the books that we're going to be talking about later and they each so far are going a little bit into detail on like one of the chapters of this book. So I feel like this is a very good book to kind of get a like foundation laid or just like an overview of good parenting 101. <laughs> like it's just a really good quick overview and it's also a pretty short book like in a easy read as far as like word length and you know difficulty and all that to read um and then just like the organization of the book itself it's formatted beautifully where the chapters at the end of each chapter it has like a little tips um or like a quick little how to actionable list that you can read and then actually take steps in, to get in the right direction. Um, so I think that it's just a really good book to be one of the first parenting books if you are looking to start reading parenting books. I agree. That's why, that's where the 10 other books that I <laughs> recommended came from is basically that The Danish Way of Parenting has those little concepts and then the other books that we'll be reviewing in the future go into more depth of the key concepts of this book. Yeah. So, The Danish Way of Parenting by, let the names butchering continue, (laughs) Jessica Jewel Alexander and Ivan Dissing Sandal. And I said it really fast, so hopefully I didn't mess it up too bad. Um, It is, yeah, overall a great book. I just, like, overview would give it a five out of five stars um, because literally everything else that I talk about like I didn't used to read parenting books or like have a specific nanny style like a lot of people say oh I use Montessori method or oh I lean toward Waldorf teachings and like different things I didn't really have one I was like uh I don't know I just kind of bring the kid along as if they were like a little extension of my arm and they go through life with me and that's how I nanny like I I treat them as if they were a, a whole human you know I don't really baby talk so like but that's just how I go And as I was reading this book, more and more I realized this is, like, my style. This is my parenting style. (laughs) Um, It's very the Danish way of parenting in the sense that, like, I do just treat them as people and just show them by modeling it how to interact in society and 
how to develop curiosity and a love for learning in their natural environment, which becomes very child-led. And it has, like, the Montessori-esque um, styles in the sense that it's, like, natural and, mm, like, curiosity-driven and is pretty low-tech, so to speak, I guess. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, so I agree with the 5 out of 5 rating for sure. Um, and I... What I say for my nannying style is play-based learning, which I get from my time when I lived in Sweden, and I would say that a lot of the Scandinavian countries are similar in their ways of upbringing, in the way that they are naturalists, especially when they're young, they're very um, get out into the world and explore, what are you interested in, and then let's explore and learn about that. Um, and that's really where I got a lot of how I lead my nannying um, from is living in Sweden in the Scandinavian countries and seeing how well-rounded and intelligent and just children that they are. I feel like in the states especially we are from <laughs> the united states so that's where oh, a yeah. lot of <laughs> that's where a lot of our uh basis is coming from but in the united states we are very much a um like competitive country and how early can we get our children to do x y and z and um that is just not the way <laughs> in the scandinavian countries in the danish way of parenting they want children to be children for as long as possible. And so I really resonated with this book as well. Um, I loved it. I think if, yeah, I think if there's one book that you can read to really get a basis of how you can let children be children, this is the one to read. This is not a book that is even telling you how to change your child. It's really a book that is encouraging encouraging you to look at yourself as a caregiver and a parent and to then apply that in a way that is healthy for your child and healthy for you even. Also, I wanted to let you guys know too that all of our books, um, as far as what you're thinking about like, oh yeah, I want to read that, I want to read it now. The books will be linked down in the description below. Those links will be affiliate links. They will all range in price from like, 10 to 20 dollars i'm gonna try hard to to make sure that we never buy just like ridiculously expensive books so that it's not unattainable for you guys to have access to um but i will leave some links for the books i bought mine at target um yeah and it was like i don't know 12 dollars, 13 dollars, or something um and then also i will add a link if they are on audible i'll add an audible link as well so that you can find the audiobook version in case you wanted to know okay <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> overall, the book goes into parenting in a lot of different aspects, but all starting with looking at yourself as the caregiver, as being the example. So everything that it touches on, um, it talks about recognizing our default settings. Then it has the chapter two, P is for play, authenticity. Um, it talks about reframing empathy, no ultimatums, and then togetherness. And basically it all starts with us as caregivers modeling these qualities and this way of presenting truth and living our authentic self and being positive people um, and then how we can implement that into the way that we teach or interact with our kids. Um, and so I really like this book. I think that's probably like two of the stars that, that I gave it out of the five is because of that, that it recognizes that as caregivers, we need to first understand and then model what we want our kids to learn. Um, because I feel like a lot of parenting books don't often address the parents as being part of the problem. And as nannies, we see a lot of family dynamics and sometimes those are dysfunctional family dynamics and we see it and as an outsider it's easy to point out and say like hey look you're obviously part of the problem um whereas I feel like when you're in it in a family it's harder to see that and so then knowing that as the nanny recognizing that we may also be part of the problem like we may also 
not be able to look at ourselves from the outside um, in the same way that the parents can't see themselves from the outsider's perspective. And so I love that this book is like basically slapping you in the face like every chapter. Like, But did you think about how you do those things first and then explains how to implement those? I think I really love parenting books because as nannies, we really... I'm not going to say parents because I don't want anyone to come at me, but we spend a lot of time (laughs) with children. And I think that a lot of people, um, number one, just don't recognize nannying as a career um, or something so influential, but we spend a lot of time with with kids and we need to recognize that who we are also influences these children. And whether the parents really recognize it or not, we, same thing. You, a parent wants to find a nanny that is a good example and can be a good team player on their parenting team that has good contrasts to the parents, but also at the end of the day, we all have the end goal of raising great children and human beings, hopefully. Um, And so I really... Yeah, I just really love this book because it really encourages you as a parent, as a caregiver, as a guardian to look at yourself, look at who you are, what you are doing, and then says, okay, well, do you want your child or the child you're around to be like you? And if the answer is no, you should probably change something about yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, that's so true. I feel like my mom used to always say, um, you know, you are your five closest friends, like, because they will inevitably rub off on you and you'll start doing things that they do or liking the same things or just, you know, and it's the same thing. Like, we're literally the kid's best friend. Like, as the nanny, we're always there. We're always around. Um, And so we definitely play such a heavily... And they're so impressionable, too. We're getting them at a super impressionable age. Um, And so, yeah, they... It's funny, like, you always hear those stories of nannies that are like, my kid said this, and then my nanny family texted me because they're like, did you say that around the kids? And it's like, yeah, all my nanny kids ever will say, oh, my goodness, or (laughs) peace out, see you later, because that's literally, like, those are two of my main... (laughs) catchphrases because it's like when you're mad at a kid you can't just be like oh you're just like oh my goodness and it's like I'm restraining myself (laughs) mine is and the nanny kid my nanny kids the older siblings or what whichever are like question me on why I say it but I just go oh you're so cute (laughs) like with this like frustrated tone of voice but I just need to remind myself in that moment that I love this kid and they really are cute at the end of the day but oh gosh do I usually want to say something different (laughs) (laughs) yeah and I feel like then they start repeating it or what I love even more is then they say it to their parents yes (laughs) like when their parents make them frustrated then they're just like oh my goodness and then (laughs) their mom's like what (laughs) You've been hanging out with Rainy too long. (laughs) Or like, oh my Lanta, that, I used to say that all the time. I've tried really hard to stop just because so many people around here anyways, um, in Washington, they're like, what? But like, I used to go, oh my Lanta. And then one of the little kids drop his toys and things and then just be like, oh my Lanta, oh my Lanta. And he's like two. And his mom's like, where are you getting this? This is, that's fantastic though. I can't imagine Listen, just hearing a little two-year-old, oh, my Lanta. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't it's, want it's to change great. that. I would want to hear that as much as possible. <laughs> oh, man. I have such a cute... I don't know. I think it's in one of my emails for, like, my email sequence. But there was a little video that uh, one of my friends made into a GIF. And it's one of my babies. I taught him to do, oh, my goodness, but, like, throw his hands on his cheeks when he said it. <laughs> looks like the home alone kid and he's just like oh <laughs> and I'm just like it was the cutest thing and he was he was so pudgy faced at that age I think he was like 18 months maybe when I taught him Aww, that it was cutest. so cute 
<laughs> I'll have to like leave a link or be able to post that or figure something out to show you guys that because it's so <laughs> cute. <laughs> oh yes, I love children. Uh, anyways, children, super impressionable. This book, super amazing. I feel like we've covered chapter one pretty well. Kind of. Yeah, I wasn't even looking at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. I'm, I'm wondering if now that we're also just more comfortable with each other in general, if it will actually end up being not as structured as, oh no, I was just going to say like oh. the, the, the episodes won't be as long. Yeah. Like, and we've also been sitting on this book long enough now that we're able to like condense, <laughs> condense more. Condense our thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then when we were first reading it and we we're just like, oh my gosh, another thing. <laughs> One of both Rainy and I's favorite quotes from chapter one, which ties in with what we were talking about, is increasing our self-awareness and making conscious decisions about our actions and reactions are the first steps towards powerful life change. So self-awareness, big thing. Make sure we're self-aware of who we are and who we want to be so that we can raise children in a way that helps them to become fantastic human beings. Yes. Love tiny little people. Good tiny little people. Um, yeah, and being self-aware, I think, is also important. A, an important part of being confident. Like, you can only be confident in your nanny ability, in your style, in your communication skills as a nanny. All of your, like, nanny persona I talk a lot about confidence because I always say fake it till you make it Google's your best friend I'm not encouraging nannies to like lie about their experience and stuff but I'm just saying like having that confidence that air of confidence about you is really a lot of what gets you hired is when you come in with confidence and not and I say confidence and I will say also um, that that there's the thin line between confidence and entitlement. Don't become entitled, but being confident in your knowledge of what you do know and then self-aware enough to recognize that you still don't know what you don't know. Um, there are still things that you may not know. But all, all that to be said that being self-aware helps with your confidence and your confidence and your self-awareness can keep each other in check. And part of that self-awareness is also recognizing your role as the nanny. Um, we had been talking about in our book club, and then the last time we tried recording this podcast, <laughs> before all of our technical <laughs> difficulties, um, about, like, mom guilt and, like, mom versus nanny vibes that we get. Um, and I actually <laughs> was curious. I haven't asked you yet because I just watched it, and I wanted to get your, like, initial reaction if you had seen it. I just watched the Nanny Diaries movie with Scarlett Johansson. Have you seen I that? I have not watched that, no. Okay, linking that down below. <laughs> Apparently it think... should be on my to-be-watched list from your facial expression. <laughs> yes. Oh, my word, yes. Okay, I will link that below. I don't remember if it's Amazon Prime or Netflix or whatever, but I will put a link because that movie, I was shocked that I had never seen it because it's an old movie. And also, like, oh, uh, she, okay, spoiler alert, not really. Actually, I won't say anything. Anyways, Nanny Diaries. But <laughs> it was true, it was true to form in the sense of the nanny-mother relationship. And you saw the nanny versus mom dynamic, which I feel like is just, it's very accurate. Um, how do you feel about that? <laughs> nanny versus mom have you ever been in that uh predicament i'm sure i <laughs> without trying to go into too much detail because you never know um <laughs> but i am very aware of it happening i think for me in the past it has very much been touch and go um i think that the mom and unfortunately it is a lot mom not dad um I think that mm -hmm. a lot of the mom nanny relationship has been good overall but then there will there would be and are times where it comes out more like whether there's a situation 
where a child says, says something and the mom gets jealous. I somehow get jealous. Like anything like that. I, I would not ever say that from any of my past experiences, it has been so prevalent because I think I would probably quit that job. Um, but Oh, of course there have been times where a situation has come up and it is definitely butting heads. And I learned, I mean, I didn't learn for a while, but um, <laughs> after a few times, I learned that it was not most of the time actually about me as a person. And so yeah. I just had to take a step back, look at the situation and say, yeah, I could see why this reaction would come about because I would probably have a similar, if not the same reaction if I were in that person's shoes, in that mom's shoes. Um, but yeah, I can think of <laughs> several specific situations over my five plus years of nannying that have been uncomfortable for sure. Um, and I definitely get upset in the moment, but as time goes on, then I, you know, take a step back and think about it. And yeah, you just have to recognize that we're all human beings and it is really difficult. Um, it can be really difficult to be a parent, to be a nanny, to be a mom, to have the world say you should be able to do everything, be a mom, be a career woman, be, you know, whatever you want to be. Um, but really that's quite impossible to actually be everything. Um, yeah. And so just looking at it from those eyes and again, it took me a while to get to that point, but now, yeah, I try to think of, I try to just take a step back and, and look at the situation in a way that, um, recognizes the difficulty of asking someone else to help you raise your child. Um, parents and moms know that that's the, you know, to be able to raise good humans, most of the time you, you do need help. Um, but that's a really difficult situation still. Yeah. I feel like it's always hard to admit when you need help and yes. even more so when society tells you, you like, shouldn't. you shouldn't. Yeah. yeah because, <laughs> uh, man, watch the movie. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot that this, like, all came back to a movie. <laughs> um, but, no, seriously, like, it is, um, uh, but seriously, the mom guilt, I was recently in a clubhouse room where we were talking about postpartum and mom guilt, and then I brought up the fact that I'm a nanny. And, at, first of all, everyone was surprised that I was in that group, which I'm like, I guess now looking back at it, it kind of makes sense. It was like postpartum, mom guilt, and then a nanny just appears. But I was coming into the room because <laughs> I wanted to know um, if they had, as the moms that were going through these struggles, any tips on how I could make it easier for the moms I worked with. Because I think that as a nanny, like, the number one quality, if there was a quality that made or break make makes make or, or break. breaks made or broke makes and or breaks makes or breaks yeah <laughs> i'm struggling okay if there was a quality that makes or breaks being a nanny i would say that it's empathy because if you don't have empathy you're not going to be able to build a good relationship with the kid or the family if you don't have empathy you're not going to be able to be any kind of intuitive which i feel like as a nanny you need to be intuitive and kind of on top of things um and so I think empathy is a really important quality as a human being in general, but especially as a nanny or as a caregiver. And so I went into the clubhouse room to see, like, I was trying to get better at having empathy for these moms that I've worked with because I personally have had some really great relationships with my nanny moms. And then there was two families that I've ever worked with and I had really bad relationships with the family and those jobs were super brief because of it um, and it ultimately came down to people will judge you no matter what you do as a mom like the moment that you tell people you're pregnant you're gonna start being judged one way or another and it's super unfortunate and really frustrating as a woman um, knowing that that's what you have to look forward to if you ever want your own bundle of joy um, 
But it's true that whether or not you stay at home and you're a stay-at-home mom, you'll be judged. If you homeschool, you'll be judged. If you send your kid to school, you'll be judged. If you go out to work and you have a nanny, you'll be judged. If you go out to work and you put your kid into daycare, you'll be judged. Like, there are people that are going to judge you for whatever you do. It's um, not even so just... Ultimately, it's not even just people who are going to judge you. It's other women and other moms. Yeah. Which is so difficult to recognize. Yeah, and it's frustrating, too, because moms and nannies will judge you and that's supposed to be your safe space like as women we should be encouraging and upbuilding other women like period that should be it but instead we compete with one another to make ourselves feel better which this book actually goes into um I think it's in chapter one it does talk about that um is it chapter one I think it is but yes, basically it, is. it does go more into um like just the fact that people compete with each other um and make themselves to make themselves feel like they're doing the best and that they are the best uh but basically the point of what i'm saying <laughs> is that as the nanny it's important to recognize that empathy is important um and to be empathetic with the moms that you're working with because you don't know what they're feeling. You don't know what pressure there is being put on them. Um, so for example, one of the families that I worked with in the past that things didn't end well, it wasn't a good relationship. Um, the kids were super sweet and friendly and we got along really well, but ultimately the mom had started going back to work and she was a flight attendant. And so she was gone for like four days at a time And she was feeling immense guilt for that because she didn't do that with her first kid. She didn't go back to work because she knew she was having a second. And so all that to be said that her guilt, um, which later also I found out that was kind of being put on her from her mom um, because her mom had been a stay-at-home mom. So there was just like a hot mess. But it ended up being that she, and rightfully so, I'm not going to say that this is bad on her. I totally 100% understood her perspective. But because I got to spend time with the kids and because um, we were working on growth in a few areas, one being picky eating, um, and sh- and we were seeing progress because she wasn't able to be the one making that progress happen and then being there to s- not and not being there to see it happen, it just was toxic. <laughs> and it be- it turned into, instead of, her being disappointed in herself, it turned it into a disgust for me. Um, and it and it was hard because it's like I'm here for you. I want to support you. I understand that this is, would be difficult. I don't, I don't know if I could do that. Like I don't know if, like. But then again, I'm not a mom, so who's to say that I wouldn't want to just like up and go to work? I might. Like, I mean, <laughs> I see a lot of moms that do it, which means that it can be done. So I might be the mom that gets up and goes to work. I might be the mom that stays home. I don't know what I'll be, but being in that competitive environment all the time, um, I could totally see from her perspective why she was immediately on the defense about it. So just going into every nanny family relationship with the notion that I'm here to support and provide aid without any judgment And with all of the empathy I have. Because that's what will make, I feel like, the relationship be less toxic. (laughs) And not get toxic at all, hopefully. It's a team effort. Yeah. And (laughs) you cannot put this in or not. It's your choice. I will say that, you know, as nannies we might judge parents, but we won't ever verbally say it. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. I That's another thing. Honestly, though, because... So, okay, let's be honest for a second. This podcast is about to be real, okay? Yeah. Um, I... Everyone that I know says that I'm... Well, less so now, because I've now learned to just not verbalize it. But when I was younger, everyone would say that I was judgmental and, like, harshly judgmental. And then I was in school and I was in a psychology class and one of my professors made the brilliant statement that everyone has to judge because that's how our brains work to categorize things. 
So when we look at something, our brain immediately makes multiple judgments to categorize what we're seeing or to categorize and process what we're hearing. And so judgment in and of itself, like making judgments or inferring what's about to happen, like literally we're taught to do that in school. When we're reading books in school, we're taught to infer what's going to happen or predict what's going to happen based on what's currently going on. So it's the same thing in life that we all will do. The problem is when your mouth runs faster than your brain, (laughs) which was my issue as a child and sometimes still is. um, And then that's when people say that you are judgmental is when you verbally judge or when you show judgment in your body language. And so it's not to say that I'm like some kind of saint that never judges what I see go on. Because sometimes, truth be told, there is a right way and a wrong way to do something. Sometimes there is. And so when you're doing something that's wrong, I'm judging it. Like, I'm making a judgment, a mental note of that is not the right way to do it. Whether or not I verbalize it in that way, that's where the empathy would come into play. Because in the empathy and the intuition, you would see and recognize why are they doing it that way? And then are they open to a suggestion? Or is it something that you don't have to actually talk about and you can just shift gradually without ever acknowledging it because that's ultimately what I do in a lot of situations that I see something that I'm like "Mm, I wouldn't do it like that well first of all if it's not just a matter of preference because I feel like a lot of nanny families have huge disagreements over matters of preference if it's not a matter of preference and it is something that seriously needs to be handled then it's like okay but can it be done gradually so that nobody has to be called out because everyone's going to get defensive when they're called out so like Learning how to, I feel like learning people skills is more important almost than child rearing specific skills as a nanny because you're like coming into a family and have to now interact with all these strangers essentially. The art of communication I think is really key and maybe down the line we can try to find a book on communication that we both feel is... um, correct in this because I I think that a lot of people don't even recognize how different a career as a nanny is from other careers where you go into an office or you, you go into a different workplace. We as nannies are legitimately going into these people's homes. We get to see the ins and outs of their relationships with each other, whether they want us to or not. Um, <laughs> we are just in it all. And so the communication skills that you need to be able to have, which I will freely admit that when I first became a nanny, I did not, I did not know, I did not have communication skills very well. I have social anxiety. So uh, the, sometimes the like hard conversations that you need to bring up that weren't specifically judgments of the family, but just situations that came up that I needed to address, you know, hourly pay, overtime, all of those things. Um, Mm -hmm. I definitely went about the wrong way because I didn't really have the knowledge of communication skills and how to go about those things. So I think it Mm -hmm. could be a good idea for us to try to find a book on communication where we really say, okay, Let's all go read this and then, or if you don't have the time to read it, we'll review it for you, give you some key points. Um, and to be honest, like we can all benefit from a refresh. learning more <laughs> about communication and how to be professional, how to be upfront while being kind, how to um, stand up for yourself in a way that's not tr- making someone else feel like you're attacking them. Those types of skills are just, are key in general for human beings who have relationships with other people, which are really important. Um, So that's most of us. But especially in the nanny profession, where we are so close to the people that we are working for, it's just, it's even more important. It's even more key to being able to have a good work relationship, work environment, because again, we're going into their home. We are, um, we are seeing everything. So, yeah. And it's hard because also like, okay, literally this timing couldn't have been any better. 
I just went, so I had the most recent family that I've worked with, um, or second to most recent, technically I am currently working with a family. Um, the family that I worked with prior, I had been with them for a year and then we kept in close contact, um, because they live right across the street from my in-laws. Like we're always over there. So I still got to see the baby and hang out with them. Um, and I just created a really great bond with this family. And so recently, um, I got to go to a wedding and take care of the baby at the wedding. And it was so interesting to see the family dynamics and to see how, as the nanny, I was involved in them more than I even thought. (laughs) So, like, I will say, as a nanny, you know, everyone always says, oh, you know, well, not everyone, actually, as the nanny, some people want you to be an integral part of their family and, like, want you to basically be auntie um, or uncle if you're a manny. And then there's, like, the other families that are, like, this is professional, you're the nanny, you come in, you work, you get out. Like, that's it. And I think it's always interesting when there's the blend, which is more often than not, yeah. of we kind of want you to be a part of our family, but also, like, you are technically not a part of our family, but you're not a stranger. Yeah. It's like this weird balance. So for the wedding, the baby needed to be in family photos and everyone lovingly reassured me that I could be in the family photos because (laughs) I had been with them. I knew their family. We were really close. Um, and I just, you know, I thought like, yeah, sure. You know, I hear you. And I genuinely believe that what you're saying to me, you believe is true that you want me in these family photos. Um, I think truer is if I could be green screened out and you could have the floating baby, you would love that. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, but really I kept thinking to myself, okay, but years from now, when you're looking back on your wedding pictures, are you going to want the nanny in your wedding pictures? Like that just sounds weird to me. And I genuinely feel close to this family, like so close that they were out of town and they called me because, and I was no longer working for them. They called me and they were like, hey, pest control is coming by my house. Can you go into the garage, let them in, and uh, there's a box of Girl Scout cookies in the pantry for you. Uh, yeah, I can do that. But I'll like, be paid in Girl Scout cookies any <laughs> day, future families, just to let you know. <laughs> yes. I was like, okay, I'll be grabbing some Girl Scout cookies. And they're constantly, because there's a mom and a daughter. And they're about the same size as me, and they're constantly getting rid of clothes. And so always, they're like, oh, and there's that pile of clothes if you want to go through and take whatever you want. And I'm like, sure do. Never shopping for myself again. (laughs) Dang you, Mike. Dang you and your reminders. Anyways, (laughs) Google just made an appearance. Um, uh, Anyways, so we are super close, but there's just still that, like, awkwardness. And then... I mean, let's be honest, weddings bring out the real family drama, and it was a little awkward, (laughs) like, as the nanny, and then there's a few grandmas there, and then there's the aunties and the friends of the mom and dad who haven't seen this baby in forever, and it's just like, okay, uh, I don't know, it just felt so awkward, and everyone was so loving, but also, like, I'm still the help, like, on the vendor list, which is fine, but, like, it just was, it was just weird, okay? And I'll admit this was my first wedding that I was hired for. Like, I've done other weddings that I'm a guest, but then I'm also low-key asked to actually watch the kid once I get there. But this is the first one where she was like, no, we're hiring you for the day, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, and I had a blast, and it went well. All of that to be said, I mean, all of that said to say the nanny family dynamic is so intimate and awkward and I don't think that families realize how awkward it is for nannies because we are also relying on you as a professional reference and so once we leave this yes we're family in the sense that you know I'll always be here I'll have your back if you move away I'm coming and visiting the kids but then also I need you as a professional reference so like I can't get so comfortable that I start venting to you about my personal life and then that come up in my reference call to my future employers because that's not a relationship that I necessarily want to have with the next family that I work with. Um, I've only ever had two nanny families that I can say, 
like I would drop everything and run to their aid. Um, and it's just because I've worked with them for a really long time and got really close. But then a lot of my nanny families, it was more professional where I came, I did my job and then I left and that was the end of it, which is fine. And I still had good relationships with those kids. They just were different. Um, yeah, I just, I think that the, the intimacy of being a nanny is so often underrated. (laughs) It really is because even as you're talking about the wedding that you went to, like, I know my (laughs) nanny family, okay, not all of them, but the family that I was with with for four years, I've been to her parents' house, I've uh, met her siblings, and I I mean, like, I know a lot of things about (laughs) about their family, and even, I mean, kids talk, guys, we all (laughs) know it, and so there are (laughs) things that kids say, and we're just like, oop! We're going to pretend that one in one ear and out the other. (laughs) So it just, it really is just a different type of of relationship. And like you said, though, that at the end of the day, it's just, it's such a balance that you have to figure out because they're still signing our paychecks. They still, they still have to pay us. They still have to give us our PTO. Um, I mean... For me, it would it's incredibly awkward a lot if I'm sick to ask for a sick day. Like it is just such a different type of relationship and job that people outside of it and even nanny parents, they don't they unless you've been a nanny, you just cannot completely understand no matter how much we can try to describe it or tell you about it. You just don't know what it's like unless you've been a nanny. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like also I've personally been really fortunate to only ever have, like I said before, the one or two not so positive experiences. Um, Most of the nanny families that I work with are amazing. And I end up having these like fairy tale dream life experiences with them. Um, you know, like one of my nanny families, I remember when I was sick and I called and I was like, hey, I'm not feeling well. Not only did she say, okay, I'm going to call into work and I'm not going in, like immediately. I didn't say anything else. And then she brought me over a little care package, like to take I care of love me. that. Yeah. And I was I like, so this much. is amazing. But then I read these like, now granted, Reddit can be a negative dark hole, but, but then I read these like Reddit posts. Where it's, like, crazy stuff is happening in these nanny families relationship, these nanny family relationships. And I'm, like, mind blown because my nanny family would never. And it's, like, people ask, like, well, then how do you vet them? Or, like, how do you interview them? What makes you get these good ones? And honestly, I'll admit my interview process is a little unorthodox, um, in the sense, like, some of the questions I ask, people are like, oh, that's too personal. You know, I would never tell my nanny that. And I'm like, well, then I wouldn't be your nanny <laughs> because I need to know these things. Um, but also, I do think that there's just an element of, like, you get some really good ones and you get some really bad ones. And I've just had amazing opportunities and been in situations where I've mostly only got really good ones. Yeah. But, and there's the balance sometimes, or not the balance, but there's the the middle ground where, like, there are fantastic things about a family, but then there are also just really bad things about a family, and you have to figure out as a nanny what you can and can't deal with. Again, not in any, like, unprofessional way, but there are things that I feel like I can deal with that maybe another nanny can't, but then another nanny can handle, but I would be like, heck no, I can't do that. You know, so you just have to figure out what you can and can't handle, and then again, there are just some experiences that you have to go through that so that you can figure out what you want and what you don't want. So take every single position that you have had as a learning experience and 
learning experiences in the positive ways and learning experiences in the negative ways where you really see like, okay, next time I have a family, I'm going to ask them these questions in an interview because I don't want that again. Or next time I'm going to ask these questions because this family didn't do that and I want them to do this. We yeah. just, we have to learn from everything. Something else I was thinking about recently was how to be professional on social media as a nanny. And it came up because one of my nanny friends that I follow on social media um, was recently venting. Now, granted, it was in a close friend's Instagram story. And so it was like, okay, I see. I see you. Like, I get that you're not putting this out there for everyone to see. But what I thought was interesting was that sometimes, and I will, okay, wait. Let me back up a little. I will say there is always a good time and place to vent, like, as far as your work stress goes. Because Definitely. sometimes you have a nanny family that you absolutely adore. You absolutely love them. They do one thing, and it's a horrible week, and it just flips you in a way that you didn't think was possible, and you, like, vent it out. And then, for whatever reason, the next week, everything goes back, like, the way it used to be, and it's good to go, and, like, you're set. And so I get that you need to vent sometimes. Um, and like we were saying earlier, that nanny family or that mom and nanny group should be a safe place, but also recognizing the balance of this is still our profession and these are future employers that have access to this or there are other nannies that won't recommend you as a nanny knowing your nanny reputation. And so it's like also there, just, there's just that balance of venting and explaining and like trying to figure solutions out with you know is this petty or is this a preference and not a real issue um and you had also said like some nannies can work with things that other nannies can't for me I can work really well in a family that says I would like it if when you are here this is done this way and I want you to know that when you are not here this is the way that it's going to be done if it is clarified up front they say that I can be oh, I could be all that I could be all about it you know like I could be there for that and I can support that because it's fine with me to say when rainy comes you know this is what you're expected to do these are the rules when mommy and daddy are home these are a little bit different rules do I agree with that like would I do that myself as a parent probably not can I respect that as a nanny? Definitely can. Why? Because I'm here to support you in whatever way you need to be supported as the family. So if that means that you don't have the patience to deal with this and you need someone else to deal with it or you don't have the patience to teach this aspect of their, you know, homeschooling or whatever, I get that. I really do. The problem for me comes in when you don't say that. You say these are the rules and then I find out later that there's this double standard of rules. That's a little bit harder for me because then... I'm not being let into the parenting circle. And as one of the caregivers, I need to be in that circle. Um, I have a whole article about communication with the nanny family. And it's basically like when you become the nanny of a specific family, it's like you're marrying them. So like the conversations that they're having in their bedroom at night after work, I mean, obviously still keeping it G rated. Uh, you need to be also included in those about the kids because those conversations are about parenting well, you're now a co-parent in a sense that you're caregiving. So that's for me where I think the biggest issue comes in. And I recently noticed on social media, not with just my one friend, but I have a few nannies on social media right now that I've noticed and I would never say anything because I get that they're venting and that in those close friend circles, you know, we're in a safe place um, where they are just venting and it may not be how they really feel or or think about things, but also recognizing that sometimes it's just a matter of preference and we just have to let it go. Like sometimes we have to know that, okay, for my next nanny family, I can't deal with this, but it doesn't make the nanny family wrong because there's a nanny that's out there for them still. Yeah. I, that just popped into my head because it has been, it's been a recurring feature on my Instagram feed recently. And I was like, just remember guys, Future employers see your public posts. Yep. And even in your private circle of friends of nannies, they may still be here for you to vent to, 
but then they may not recommend you as a nanny <laughs> to their yeah. other nanny friends or to their other moms or whatever for like anyways exactly just throwing that out there just throwing <laughs> that out there um, um yeah so that's basically chapter one <laughs> <laughs> basically <laughs> um uh yeah so uh, i guess next time we can just talk a bit more about the danish way of parenting and give some more commentary as you saw that was kind of like a snippet of what our commentary looks like it's going to be all over the place <laughs> but uh ultimately it'll be here for supportive informative information that was redundant but you get my point <laughs> just a chill chat <laughs> just a chill chat yeah we are hoping to have these every tuesday um, so if you are interested in following us along in our chit chatty journey, feel free to subscribe. Also rate us if you are listening on any podcasting app. Um, please, I would appreciate a five star, but you know, whatever star <laughs> is fine. Be honest, be authentic. Um, but yeah, if you want to rate us and share us on social media or tag us in anything, I'm at OS Simply and Janae is at, at Nanny Janae. Nanny Janae. Yes. Okay. And all of that will be linked below as well as that movie recommendation. Please watch that. Oh my word. So good. And that's the Nanny Diaries. I will have it linked below. And then also we will link the book that you can buy, the physical copy, and I will link an Audible link if that is possible.